We are so glad to be here to share information about doing dialysis on your schedule so your life works better. Our sponsor for this webinar is Fresenius Medical Care. Jen and I are going to be your co-anchors tonight. Jen Rabert is the newest addition to the MEI leadership team and our special guests tonight are Bill LaCroix, who does nocturnal home hemo with the help of his wife, Tanya, and they are both here with us. And then we will also be having Miss Sandra Cannon, who does peritoneal dialysis with a cycler, and Tara Tao, or Toe. I meant to ask you how you pronounce your last name, and then I forgot. It's Tao. It's Tao. I did it right the first time. Tara okay. Tao is a Fresenius PD nurse who works with Sandra. We are going to be monitoring the chat for your questions, and we are recording this session so that, let me make sure it's recording. Yep, it's recording. So that folks who couldn't make it tonight can listen to this anytime they want, and we will post the recording on Home Dialysis Central, and we will also have it stay in the Facebook group so that everybody can still have access to it. So um, first thing that we're going to do is have everybody introduce themselves, and then we can start the conversation. So I'm going to ask everybody, I'm going to call on you all so that we know who's talking when. I will start with me because I'm the one talking. So I'm Dory Chattel, and I am the executive director of the Nonprofit Medical Education Institute. And we do, among many other things, Home Dialysis Central and the Home Dialysis Central Facebook group. And that's um, part of the reason that we do these webinars because we just really like to connect with folks that are already interacting with us in various ways. So I'm going to ask Jen to tell us a little, well, okay, let me, I'm going to ask one more thing, which is when you introduce yourself, just tell us a little bit about how you came to be involved with dialysis. And you don't have to give us the whole story yet, Tanya and Bill, because I will give you a chance to tell the whole story, but just kind of a quick overview as a, a teaser so that folks who are watching will be interested in continuing to watch. So Jen, um, why don't you tell us a little about you and how you came to be involved with dialysis? Well, I'm Jen and I'm program director at MEI now. And I started off in dialysis because my grandma was on dialysis. And then my mom and I, we, we went through um, that the whole process with my grandmother and then my, my, my stepdad a couple of years later ended up on dialysis as well. So my mom did peritoneal with my grandma and my stepdad. We did home hemo training. And at the same time that all this was going on, I became a home hemo nurse and then a PD nurse. So I, I ended up cross training and my family was doing it at the same time. So I got to see it from both sides, uh, which is very interesting. Um, so that's how I ended up in advocacy and um, I, that's, I ended up treating my patients like family and then I ended up going over to MEI which has been amazing so that's how I got here. <laughs> All right um, Tanya and Bill why don't we go to you next let's um, let's start with Bill. She's <laughs> well I've been on every dialysis that you could be on Wow. For how long? About six years. Okay. June of 2018. All right. So well, that's four years. And prior to that, they um they knew that it was coming, the you know, the end with the renal failure. So they had already created the fistula vascular did. So Good. we had had that about a year prior to going on to dialysis. So he didn't have to have the port or anything. That that should happen more than it does. All right, great. And and Tara, how about you? Um, I started um, the, my career as a dialysis nurse in 1998. Um, and I was a new nurse and um, I started out with hemodialysis and I did hemodialysis for about five years. In center. In center, yes. In center. And okay. I was an in center hemo nurse. Um, after about a year of being, being an in center nurse, um, one of my um, co-workers she was doing PD and she's like well you've been here a year now now you're going to do PD and so 
had no idea what it was. I never saw what she was doing. And she just gave me the program. And um, we only had two patients. So for the next four years, I worked mostly in center because we didn't have enough patients for me to right. stay as right. a home dialysis nurse. Uh, we got a new new dialysis, a new nephrologist in town. And my program grew from two to about 20 in six months. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So I learned a wow. lot, lot, a whole lot about that dialysis. <laughs> is amazing. So yeah. then, then were you the only nurse or were there I was the only that? one? Yeah, I was the only one. So I had to be, I had to be work full time then. Um, as a PD nurse then. And, um, and it eventually, you know, our program got so big, we went to another building, made a new space. And, um, in, in any way, I fell in love with the modality because I saw what a difference my patients' lives they had as opposed to the ones I had been taking care of for five years. You know, it, they just were more outgoing. They had yeah. um, more say-so about what was going on in their lives. They had us, you know, they they lived life on their terms, in my opinion, and they seemed healthier, um, and I enjoyed that. So I've stayed with it all these years. Oh, that's so great. All right. Well, we are still, um, we're still waiting for Christy to help Sandra get into the webinar, which I'm confident will happen because we did a practice and everything worked fine, but you know, sometimes these things happen. So let's start with Tanya and Bill and tell us the whole story, you know, tell us what, what caused the kidney failure and how did you end up doing all those different options? As there must have been a reason to right. go from one to another. Because if you're happy with the one you're on, you probably stay on it. And sometimes people stay on it even when they're not happy. Right. The, um, so he's had diabetes for quite a while. And he was in the construction field. So that means stepping on nails and stepping oh, on yeah, screws and things like that. So he... Um, he had infections in his feet more than one time, which required um, long-term antibiotics. That's what we think shut his kidneys or, you know, started the kidney failure. Mm. Did, so, he have, did he have high blood pressure also? Um, not at, he's really never had high blood pressure. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So he's been pretty consistent with that. He does have AFib, um, but the blood pressure is pretty, um, we've been able to control it. So we've been lucky in that fact. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the antibiotics, it, it, that could have been what they call acute on chronic. Right. There's Sandra. Hey, there's Sandra. I'm sorry. All right. It well, let's, um, let's jump to Sandra, just have her introduce herself and then we'll go back to your story and then we'll do her story. All right. All right, so Sandra, if you could just quickly just tell us um, kind of who you are and how you came to be involved with dialysis. And we'll let you tell the whole story after Tanya and Bill tell theirs. Okay, I'm Sandra Cannon. I live in Kennesaw. And um, I love how you say Kennesaw. <laughs> oh, and all I can say is I love dialysis. I think everybody that's got kidney problems should be on it. Wow. There's some enthusiasm. You <laughs> do not always see that. That's pretty great. Yes, I'm very enthusiastic. I yeah, really am. Well, a positive attitude can get you a very long way. That is just wonderful to see. I cannot I've, wait to hear more of your story. I've got a good one. I know. I'm sure <laughs> you have to. All right. So Tanya was just saying that Bill had diabetes and had gotten some infections in his feet from stepping on things at the construction site where he worked. And, and had a lot of antibiotics and that oh. might be what caused the, the at least kind of the straw that straw that tipped the camel's back or however that phrase goes. So probably oh, the camel's back. 2016, 17, that's when he started with nephrology at Georgia Kidney. Um, then, you know, they just kept an eye on his numbers, creatinine and those numbers um, went ahead the numbers kept declining. So that's when they did the fistula um, so that when it did come on, he would be ready. So June, 2018, um, I can't remember. I think, 
I cannot, I'm not exactly sure the symptoms. My dad was, he had passed at the same time all of this was going on. So, oh, um, but we ended up, he had ended up going in the hospital. They started him on dialysis um, there. When he left the hospital, he went on in clinic um, dialysis and he did that probably till September. And we tried PD. Um, we did PD um, probably nine months. Mm -hmm. He ended up getting peritonitis twice. So, mm -hmm. so oh. we had to halt that. And then, so he did clinic for a little bit more. And then they were like, oh, how about let's do a home hemo? Um, so we started that probably October, 2019 is when we both started training on it. Um, and so we've been doing it ever since. And at the beginning of 2022 is when they asked us about nocturnal home hemo. How, how, what was the schedule you were doing before that? So we were doing three, no, we were doing four days a week, um, on the regular home hemo. I would come home from work at that time. Um, he was able to help a little bit with setting up the machine and everything. His eyesight's going now. So it's not, I'm doing most everything. That, that makes it harder. Yeah. Yes. So, but at that time he was helping, but our whole evening was gone. Like you had no time to do anything. So um, it's when they tough to, to fit in daily hemo when you're and, coming home and cooking dinner and yep. doing it's, just, you can't just aren't can't enough hours day. So they, they brought up the heat uh, the nocturnal and we were like, um, we'll give it a shot. Um, he wasn't as enthusiastic as I was. I was like, well, let's make it about me a little bit this time. So I can, you know, we've got to give and take. So, um, we've been doing that since the beginning of the year and we're on it. I'll put him on about nine 45 at night. So that's 10 months. So yeah. you're, that's a pretty good stretch so far. And for the most part, um, we have the iPad. I sleep, it sleeps next to the bed. There is something that you, um, there's a sensor pad that you put on the Venus, um, access. The red sense. What now? You have a red sense? Yes. Blood detector? Yes. Okay. So that so gives you it, some confidence it, about leaks that you don't have to worry. Right. What so about tossing and turning? Has that been an issue at all? He's, well, he's, he sleeps right where he's at right now in the recliner. Oh, so, nice. Okay. Yeah, we so do that's, that's comfortable and yeah, not, not so much ability to turn all the way over. Exactly. The, yeah, that's, that's the a problem we have is when he stretches out, his arm will fall. So sometimes the pressures will change a little bit. Sure. Um, but more often than not, we don't have alarms. So if I can sleep most of the night, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so you know, he'll run, we'll run seven and a half hours. Um, so I'll get up at, I'll take him off at 530. Usually I've gotten part ready to go to work that next morning. So it's been, I mean, and it's making his help. I think it's, you know, slowing down the process of his kidneys failing more. So yeah, good. Well, and you, and you were telling us at the practice that, and, and Bill, feel free to speak up if, if you have any desire to, but I know you, you've had a lot of health crises lately. So you've, you kind of been through the mill, you know, health wise. Well, I'll just tell you, if I didn't have a good wife, <laughs> I'm scared. I know him in dead. I mean, she takes care of me. Uh, sometimes she overcares. <laughs> <laughs> I can be a nagger. <laughs> but she yeah. does very, she does That's just very part of well. the wife job description, I think. Yeah. <laughs> she does very well. And each month when we go into our clinic, Dr. Shavu gives her a, a hundred percent on her grading because oh. she does a everything plus. right you know yep i do everything wrong but she does it all right oh, I don't know about that. Right. but i mean you 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 broke a hip and then and then you had a, a foot ulcer and then you got shingles so that is a one two three punch. that's just a lot and you are looking pretty good 
for all of that. Yeah, you guys are champions. <laughs> yeah, that that is boy. You gotta hope that that all of the bad stuff is behind you, and there are blue skies ahead at this point. Exactly. Well, that's because Tanya wraps me in bubble wrap now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, you need one of those big roles. Exactly. All right. So Sandra, how about you? Well, I've been on it for a year and a half. I What makes me unique is that I have an ileostomy. Oh, and if you ask wow. any doctor, they'll tell you, you cannot go on PD if you have an ileostomy. So and can, can you explain to folks in case they don't know what, what an ileostomy is? All right, I came down with C. diff and um, Mercer and 12, and they had to remove part of my colon. Okay. And I was in good health other than that. It, well, I was in the hospital from April to October. So oh that's how goodness. bad I was. Wow. wow. And when and I got out, they told you me that now. I would always have a walker and I'd have a brace on my leg and I said no if the Lord saved me he wasn't waiting for me to sit on my hiney so by <laughs> April I was driving and so when they told me that I, my kidneys were going out because of the drugs and all that I've been on yeah those are I some said okay heavy, I'll just meet my good Lord and know where I'm going so well, did. my son would not accept it. He just wouldn't. So I had been needing to go on dialysis for a year. And he went to my surgeon that did it. And Dr. Hathaway said, Sandra, I've researched it. There's nothing where it's ever been done. But he said, I'm willing to try. There's nothing to lose. Wow. So he, he operated on me, gave me, I think it was a month or four, three or four weeks to, re, you know, to heal. And when I went into the clinic in Ackworth and Andre was there and she told me up front, she said, Sandra, I have a lot of chip tricks up my sleeve. We're going to make this work. And as soon as she hooked me up, it worked beautifully. I mean, I didn't even have a hiccup. So <clears throat> I, you know, they have to increase it. Right. I went on a cruise. I've been to Florida. I traveled. That's why I'm so enthusiastic. I... Well, like today, go on a trip. I hook up at night, sleep all night, unhook in the morning, and go about my, you know, what I want to do. And, and today you went and picked apples. Yes. I mean, well, you picked has pies. My, <laughs> well, everybody has else my picked hurt, apples. So. <laughs> my, I mean, I still oh. have the two year olds in, in Sunday school. I have the Puggles and I have the Mops mothers. Aww. And it, I mean, I'm still enjoying the children. And I'm still enjoying life. So, I mean, I have no, I, let's just say this. I have no reason in the world to be unhappy or to be upset. Yes, you have to plan. Yes, you have to be extremely sanitary. Yes, you've got to follow the rules and eat what you're supposed to. And I walk two miles a day. Wow. So, wow. I, I mean, my life is no different. I mean, yeah, I've got equipment around here and stuff like that, but you know, every you everything's got a problem. And the good thing of it is, you, everybody's going to sleep at night. So while I'm sleeping, it's doing its job. And I, I, as far as I like a little bit of having enough fluid yet, and they're working with me because being um, having my ileostomy. I absorb water. I have to drink at least, they want me to drink 64 ounces a day, which I can't because I'd stay on the toilet. But the machine, it says, look, you've got too much fluid on you. You, you know, he keeps pulling off some. So, because oh, my yeah. body see, gets the fluids and it loves it. It just sucks it up. And, but wow. they're working on it and eventually we'll, <laughs> we'll have it. I mean, it's a problem in progress. That's the way I'll put it. And between all of them, they'll eventually get it worked out. Could they keep tweaking the machine and keep tweaking me? If, but uh, if they got you sorted I, in I, the first place, it sounds like you have a pretty stellar team that will figure this out for you. Also, they will. They will. I mean, they're the best. That's I just, awesome. I love every one of them. Wow. <laughs> and if I get a problem, they take right care of it. And you especially, <laughs> you and, and Andrea, I can't say enough about Andrea. Yes. She really, 
she's put me where I am right now. We but I'm a happy right. lady. I, I wish I could tell everybody to do this. Well, you kind of are right now. <laughs> you are. Well, you, you are. You have to follow the rules. I mean, you know, I have to change it every morning. I have to eat right. I have to be sanitary. I mean, you know, as long as you do what you're supposed to do, you know, you get rewarded by feeling good. And I feel good. <laughs> you, you look like somebody who feels good. I do. I really do. I, that is great. I would love to do more yard. My son gets mad at me. He, he, he thinks I overdo it. But, you know, as long as I feel like doing it, I feel like I should do it. So, yeah. yeah. But I, do, I think everybody should be on PD if they got dialysis. <laughs> it's well it works for me and like I said the doctors need to quit saying if you have an ileostomy or an ostomy that you can't go on dialysis PD diet sounds like maybe you can I hope well Dr. Hathaway is he does a lot of the uh, implants and all and mm -hmm. he is definitely pushing it he, you know he he is as happy as I am because he said it it shows that it can be, and I'm 82 years old. So if I, a person, I was not going to ask, but thank you for volunteering. I wasn't that. Ask, but wow. <laughs> but if I can do it at my age, man, anybody God younger could, could do it. I mean, you know, so they need to tell them they can't do it. They just need a good surgeon. Jen, have you ever heard of anybody with an ileostomy doing PD? I have not. In fact, like I've always I've, heard that you like, they always say extensive abdominal surgeries, you know, and I mean, I've seen people who've had extensive abdominal surgeries do PD, but I don't think I've ever seen an ostomy. I'm, I'm not Which sure. is, I mean, it makes sense. No, I mean, I as long as it's a closed ostomy, it's not leaking. It exactly seems like what, it would work. That is exactly where my head was going is, well, okay, it's just connected well, why? to the outside. Were but they just concerned that, about scar tissue? Should well, be an intact it. membrane. Neat, right. Yeah, I think the That's biggest how it thing, works, right? I think it, the biggest thing is cross contamination. Right. So that was one thing that we wanted to make sure that, you know, if she's doing care for her yeah. ostomy, then she's not doing care for her PD catheter or, you know, and then, then just making sure that we have the good hand washing and um that and make sure that that, makes, that they don't cross contaminate one another. But right. I think that's one of the biggest concerns um, you know, that they that they say as well. Right. Well, you know, I think a really good point that has come out of this conversation already is that there is no one option that works best for everybody all the time. Yeah. And that's why it's so great that there are so many different options and that you can pick one and pick a schedule that makes your life work for you. And whatever, what, so what works at one point might not work at another point, And then there are other ways to do it. So. And I will say too, as a caregiver, um, Fresenius, our clinic in Woodstock is awesome too. Um, like yours is in Ackworth, but like I go on a girl's trip once a year and it's for a week. And so they will take him in clinic so that I can do that. So there are ways to make things work. Yeah. Yep. I think the clinic that is so important. make the biggest difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It does make a huge, huge difference. So well, they have your your you and I mean I'm not just a number, and they take my right. problems and tweak them. And you know you can't you can't ask for any more. So it whatever y'all are doing, just keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> so Tara, can you tell us anything about what what y'all are doing and and maybe what like well, what well, are I some mean, of your you know, favorite things that you've seen happen with folks who are doing PD? Because I know you really like PD. Uh, yeah, and, and so I'm I'm a program manager, so I actually have patients that are um, peritoneal dialysis patients and home hemodialysis patients. Right. Um, and you know, the biggest thing that I love most about my job um, is being able to help somebody understand that when it, they do come to dialysis, it's not the end of their life. It's just right. a different way of living it. And yeah. they get to choose which, what, which way they want to live it. Um, you know, and we, 
be letting them know all the choices. I ha I'm fortunate enough that I can sometimes be in on the conversations with patients who are making a decision. Mm -hmm. um, we have a really healthy um, CKD um, group, uh, nephrology group that allows us to do some of the CKD education. Um, and we, you know, we, we give them all the options. So that's um, the and, kidney care advocates? Yes. Mm -hmm. The kidney care advocates, um, we assist her um, in our, in, in my biggest program there in, in Rome, where I'm from. Um, and it's just educating and making sure that the patient knows what they're signing up for, you know, what the commitment is. Right what their life is going to look like afterwards, you know, even going down to describing how, you know, the modifications or the changes that may need to take place in their home, just right. so that they come on board fully aware and that they know and that they've made an informed decision on what that would actually help them live their best life, you know, um, and, and it gives the patients power whenever they're able to be a part of their um, health care and be a part of their dialysis experience. They can just like Miss Cannon said, she didn't have to worry about a chair time. You know, mm -hmm. she just got to get up this morning and go to the mm -hmm. go to the the mountains on the trip. And right. you know, that's what we want to do in life is to be able to have control over the things we can have control of. And and home dialysis does that for patients. So we have a question for you from one of our audience members who is wondering. Have you ever had a blind person be able to do solo home hemo? I'm not aware of anyone doing solo home hemo. I um, knew one person who did that and she somehow put in her needles by herself. Oof. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I don't exactly know how it worked. Mm -hmm. It's certainly possible to do home hemo and be blind, but yes, absolutely. by feel is, I, yeah. that, I don't know. What do you think, Jen? Have you ever seen it? I've not. And, and it's a thing that I've thought about because of, uh, I, I always try to find new accessibility options. And, you know, one of, there are things that people could do that could be done in the industry to make, dialysis more accessible to people who have, you know, sight or hearing issues. Mm -hmm. um, for example, you know, uh, the iPad right now, it doesn't currently speak and give you your pressures. Oh, sure. You we have, I don't know how else you would get pressures. Like, how would you know what your parameter settings are? What would you know what your pressures are? How would you respond to a, a red or a yellow alarm? Wow. Um, or, you know, without, and, and that's only that system, but you know, there's other ones. I, I would like to see, you know, more adaptive technology for that mm -hmm. because it, I don't see why not if, if a person could be trained for adaptability, but not, not, I have not seen it solo. I I've seen As I patients who in, are blind do PD. In 32 years of working in this field, only one person that I know of, and I still can't quite, quite don't know how <laughs> how where there's a will but there's PD, usually yes. a way there are yes. have you had have you had blind people do pd yes i have you both have so mm -hmm. you know so that's an option to definitely not rule out i am interested to know you know beyond fitting the treatment into your lives and i'll start with tanya and bill and then and then sandra i would love to hear what you say about this too you also have to fit the stuff around the treatment. So especially the getting the supplies, the putting the supplies away, the sorting out the supplies so that you have what you need when you need it. How has that been working for you? What um, sorts of things and like, how, how was that different from say PD to home hemo? Um, PD, we had a wall full of supplies. <laughs> That's what and I see. With the um, home hemo, it's probably cut in half. Okay, um, so it's fewer. Right. So when we can't, so with home hemo, you have your cycler, then you have your, we have the pure flow that we make our dialysate. Um, but if that's not available, um, say the, you know, certain circumstances make it to where you have to use bags like on PD instead of so we have a supply of those mm -hmm. and that's what we would take on trips with us also um, we have not gone on a trip with 
um, the cycler yet. I've taken PD on a trip. Right. Um, this we haven't just because of health issues. Um, we haven't traveled yet really. Sure. Um, or if we've traveled, we've tried to make it only a night or two so that we're back home. Yeah, that makes total sense. All so, right. So but about, the, the about supplies, health you know, next stage calls us um, once some, or calls us or computer, we, you know, emails, they, they count back what our supplies, what we need. Um, they drop it on our front porch. Um, so, and then our clinic, you know, the other supplies that we need all, you know, the gauzes and the tapes and the needles and all that. Um, I order, I try to order once a month. Mm -hmm. So and they I, drop it on your front porch. Are you moving the boxes then into your house? Or my son. Your son. <laughs> so, yes. Handy. It's All a right. workout. Do you loan I mean, him the, out to other people who could? <laughs> uh, the pre-COVID, they would take it back. We keep it in our bedroom. Right. Pre-COVID, yep. they would bring it in. And I think they would, certain people probably would now. Um, but sometimes they'll just drop it and go. So we're, yeah. you know, we're doing it ourselves. Okay. Well, it's great that you have your son to help you. Yes. Sandra, how about you? How are you handling the supplies? Oh, I, I have one of the best deliverers. He's really sweet. I have my, I have a huge closet in my grandson's room. Mm -hmm. I turned one of my bedrooms in for my boys Aww. and it's got a big closet. So the supplies that you just keep on hand in case you need them, I put them in there. And then my, for my cycler, it goes in my spare bedroom over in the corner. Since I only really use yellow, I mm -hmm. don't have to have a, a, the green and the red. Uh, I may sometime, but right now, I, since I love my fluid so much, they just give me the yellow. But I had, I mean, my son, I'll meet him and his wife, Angela, came over because they put it all in my dining room and I was over well, I looked at all those boxes and I thought, what in the name of heavens am I going to that, do? That first delivery, <laughs> is it first so delivery, proper, isn't it? He's a developer. So he came in and bless his heart. He said, we'll do this, this, and this. Him and the boys put all my supplies where they were, arranged everything and showed it to me and said, now mama go to it. <laughs> so I was lucky. I, I mean, I've got, oh, I've got such great support with my, my family. They, um, I mean, anything I need to do, no big job. My, my grandsons will come over and do it or my son will come over and do it. So I'm blessed. I'm really blessed Fantastic. in a lot of ways. Y'all are, y'all are both blessed. Oh, so, we are. I mean, I, yeah. he's gone through a lot and bless his heart. Oh, I, I admire him. I'll put it that way. I really do admire him. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has a good, you know, a a story um and you just adapt you know you adapt your life to what's going on mm -hmm. you have to <laughs> you're exactly right yeah. you can if you sit and grumble about it it isn't going to help anything no nope. I mean you have no alternative you accept what you've got you make the best of it and you'll be happy exactly. I mean why fight something that you can't change so I to me, whatever comes my way, I accept it. I adjust my life to it and go on. And very wise. Yeah. Very, very smart. So we have another question from Christopher. He says, do you know of a program where techs come to the home and help patients with home hemo? Tara or Jen, do you, because I can answer that, but I want to hear what y'all have to say first. Well, well, we certainly have um, techs that can come. Um, we we have a, a tech in um, our program, and um, I know of um, other programs. If there's problem with cannulation or anything like that, we want the patient to be as independent as possible. So they, we are teaching the patient and their care partners how to do it at home themselves. So, um, but you know, everybody sometimes needs a little extra help. Yep. And so um, if, if there's a, a situation where 
um, the cannulation, you just need someone else, a different set of hands, a different set of eyes to help get the needles in or um, maybe to help with a water sample or something like that. We are happy to send someone out um, if there's a need like that. But our biggest, our, our biggest thing is to get the patient and, and their care partners to be independent. We don't per se come out and run the entire treatments for you as a routine basis. Right. I mean, but we that's, can come out and help. That's a different thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can come out and help when there's, you know, some some issues that need to be worked through. And I will say that they do, like, um, with Bill's cannulation and accesses, I created buttonholes. Mm -hmm. So when, you know, the scar tissue builds up and you need to switch them, I have a harder time doing that sometimes than I like the buttonholes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... But you can, do you, can you use sharps and start new buttonholes? Or yes. Is that some, okay, great. Yes. And you, you've really been. So I've used the sharps well. and the buttonholes and that's what we're doing right now. We're creating new buttonholes. Yep. Well, he's probably lost some weight and maybe some muscle from being, you know, in the hospital and in rehab for yep. a while. So everything moves around a little bit. Yes. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Jen, are you aware of programs where techs can go out to the home and, and help with any of the hemo tasks? I know the text. I mean, we. I've always had text be able to go out to the house and 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 help with technical issues, water issues. I I've always known a home hemo nurse or a home PD nurse or a, any dialysis nurse to kind of go yeah. help a patient at home so they can do their treatments at home. It's it's very important to keep people at home and independent. So if, if that means that someone's having a struggle and if it's if it takes 20 minutes out of your day to go help a needle um, and then a person can go and relax and have an eight hour treatment at home, then that's what you do. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's that's but for the most part, I, I don't I don't know of any programs that have a tech just go over and do a one on one. Well, at they, home. They, they can't is the they thing. They just can't. Um, yeah, this was it was tried in the 80s. There was a Medicare pilot. I think it was in Florida, but I'm not positive because that was a little bit before my time, but not that much before my time. And um, what happened is there was some fraud and Medicare shut that down and they have not done it since. And it's been more than 40 years and it is well past time to try it again. Mm -hmm. So right. at some point we need to, um, and I'm at, I've actually sent an email out just last week about this to somebody who works at the Medicare Innovation Center to say, hey, you know, is there any possibility of doing a pilot of staff assisted home dialysis again? Because it's been a good long while and yeah, yeah, the federal government says they want to see more PD and more home hemo. And getting people some help would be a good way to do it. In Canada, uh, it's very common that they will have um, nurses or go to the home and help with Cycler PD, you know, for folks who aren't as able as Sandra to, to kind of go in, hook them up at night, and then come back, unhook them in the morning. I'm not sure what happens if they have alarms during the night. I've never actually seen that question answered, but uh, but right now it's not it's not really possible to have somebody come to your home and do it and have Medicare pay for it. Some insurance plans will pay for staff assisted home chemo, but since Medicare doesn't, most health plans don't either because they follow Medicare's lead. There are some people who have done it. I have heard of it being done, but it's pretty rare. And then I think it's usually a nurse, but but coming to people's homes and helping with PD and helping with hemo is actually a growth area for techs. It's something that is, you know, more, more programs are starting to do it. More techs are starting to have more variety in their jobs, which is great. And, and y'all are starting to have more help at home, which is even better. So it's a, it's a good direction. It was a great question. Thank you. All right. So we have about 14 minutes left if we want to use them. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you were just really hoping to be able to tell folks and we're kind of waiting for an opportunity? Well, to me, people need to try it. If, 
the main thing, if it didn't work for them, just like you said, uh, there's reasons you can't do certain things. But PD to me, if it works for you, is the way to go. I mean, your life is not interrupted, or at least mine's not. I mean, you'll have procedures you do, but you know, you've got certain things you have to do anyway. So it's just a different way of doing it. And I, I'll admit, I, I, I had no idea what I was walking into, but, well, uh, but and, with and the you, clinic, you went right to PD. You never did hemo in a center at all. No, that's terrific and really unusual. Almost everybody ends up starting in a center and then going to something else. And often people just never get to that something else. They just stay in center and they wait for that transplant to come. And then sometimes they're not really living. In the meantime, they're waiting. And, you know, this is your life too. Every day of this, it's still your life. So you can wait, but you can be living while you wait. Instead yes. of being unhappy and, you know, whatever when you wait. I was fortunate that I had had a, a person that, was on PD, so I did know something about it. Oh, but you knew about they had told it. me there was no way with my ileostomy. Right. So I just dismissed it, and That's I'm so glad so my cool. son was persistent because right? he he would not take no. He just wouldn't. And my doctor got mad at him because he went over his head and went straight to the surgeon. And, wow, good for wow. him. <laughs> and you know he he. Well, anyway, he he said, you wouldn't give me an answer. And he said, you know, if you don't like it, lump it. I mean, he just, <laughs> he, I guess I have a son that he will never say an ugly word. He will tell you off and you'll look at him and you won't have a butt left. But it, it's he's nice. I don't know. I just, he amazes me. <laughs> but I'm, um, I'm he's my you amaze, I'm guessing you amaze him too. Yeah, he is. He really well, I'm alive because of him. And right. he knew I was going to meet my maker. And that was that. And he just, he said, mother, I'm not ready to give you up yet. Oh, so uh, you I'm got blessed. this whole new life. You got this. Oh, whole, yeah. That's amazing. It, I, I mean, it, from the first treatment, I felt better when they only put one bag in me. And I couldn't believe the way I felt. I mean, I wasn't back to normal or anything, but I had more energy. I really, it was amazing. It's all I, about I, energy, isn't it? I could have energy. hugged every one of them, and I did. Was, <laughs> I was just that amazed. And the more they worked with me and built up my, you know, volume. And um, then in January, I went to the my uh, catheter. I mean, my tube got stopped up. So I went in the hospital for one night. Dr. Hathaway fixed it. The hospital bursted my line and put, blowed me up to the point I was about to die. It's taken me six months to get back where I was. They say most people, after they experience that, they won't go back on uh, PD. But I said, no, because Dr. Hathaway told me if he ever pulled the tube, he'd never get it back in. So they started me out at 500 and we increased and I'm the back up to uh, my 1800. Oh, good. So yeah, it's unfortunately hospital staff don't necessarily know anything about dialysis, especially PD. They don't. Yes. No. They don't. So they told me they were, you know, they were training on me. Had I known that's that, that's not okay. You or they'll know. have one cycler on the floor and it's on the other side of the hospital. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, it was we because he was in the hospital one time when he was on PD. And you'll find too when you go to the doctors and you're like, we're on home hemo, and they're like, what's that? You like you're educating doctors. Absolutely, yeah. I hear that. We hear that all the time that, that people will say I'm a home, home hemo and then they'll 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 sort of mansplain you mean you're on PD like, no nope. <laughs> no it's a thing if it makes you feel any better doctors do it to nurses too like when I go to a doctor and they ask me what I do for a living and I talk about dialysis or home dialysis 
I've I've had people explain to me that that is not a thing, and I've had to be like, no, it certainly is. I swear, <laughs> it it yeah. is. A, I mean, it's amazing the knowledge that's not out there about PD and about dialysis. I mean, we there's try. a lot of ignorance out there. <laughs> right. But I've learned my lesson, and let me tell you, if I ever go back in, man, they're not going to like me because I'm going to watch every. I mean. Ooh, yes. I'll be ugly. <laughs> and I'm not Absolutely. normally, but it won't happen again. I mean, the and the thing to really keep an eye on is make sure that nobody puts anything in that PD catheter except oh, PD yes. fluid, because that has happened and it doesn't end well. Well, mine did. I mean, well, six months it's taken me to get back to where I was and that shouldn't have happened, but that's okay. I, they, the clinic worked with me, bless their hearts. And kept increasing it and you know they got me there that's so that is um, amazing like I say Ackworth Clinic I give them nothing but bukus of flowers <laughs> well we, even you <laughs> I, you're, you're so good you can work with machine great well, so um, you Miss Cannon you're 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 the best you're the best poster child for peritoneal dialysis we could have so. absolutely <laughs> well I enjoy it I'll put it that way it's not a I mean, I do actually, and you know, because I'm alive. That's the main thing. That's I would not best. be, I wouldn't be, I'd be dead. So, you know, every day is a blessing. Very and I, nice. I try, you know, I take it for what it gives me. I don't know how many more I'll have, but I'll enjoy every one of them while I'm here. So I do appreciate do the work y'all do. Because y'all make it easy. You really make it easy. And I thank you for it. I really do. Awesome. Um, Tanya and Bill, did you have anything else that, that you wanted to make sure you said that I didn't ask about? I think we covered it. We covered it. Yep. All right. Tara, how about you? I was just going to say a lot of fear is out there for patients, um, you know, if they're in center and, and, you know, they're thinking about doing home dialysis and it's just, it's just like anything, the fear of the unknown. Um, and you know, there's a lot of things in my life that I'm fearful of until I do it. And then I, I do it and I'm like, what was I so worried about? So, I mean, and that's, that's just, that's how dialysis is. So if you're interested in it, if you think that you want to do home, um, dialysis, you should really look into it and give it some thought because it, it really can do a lot to change your lives. It absolutely can. And we have built a tool called my kidney life plan. Now it's all new and it includes transplant and comfort care along with all the kinds of dialysis. So it's different than it was. Okay. But, but the idea is that rather than start with what kind of dialysis do I want to do? Because nobody wants to do any kind of dialysis before they right. start dialysis. Nobody, nobody wants to need dialysis. Nobody. 32 years, I have never run across anybody who was like, yay, I get to do dialysis <laughs> until after they're on it. And then they, and they like it. Then, then some of them like Sandra are like that, but before nobody, it, it's, it's a scary stuff. You know, it's a big life change, but, but if you come at it from what you want to keep in your life, what you want to be able to do, how you want to feel, you know, I want to have energy. I want to be able to travel. I, you know, I have a pet, whatever it is that matters to you. That's where this tool starts. You know, if you're not sure what you want to do, you don't want to do anything, but you got to do something. It's a good place to start, you know, and it, it's, um, Tara, I think you would like it. I think it seems like a All good right, fit. I'll for, check it out. Yeah. I think it's, it's a good fit for kind of how you're, how you're looking at folks. And the quote that I will leave you with, it's one that's actually in the book that I was working on today that will come out next year that goes with the, the tool. Um, the quote is variously from, uh, it's been attributed to Joan London and also others who will remain unnamed, but, but it, the quote is, you have to want something more than you're afraid of it. And that's where your motivation comes in because it's not about, oh, I want to do this treatment or that treatment. It's, I want it, I want to be able to keep my job. I want to be able to meet my kids when they get off the school bus. I want to sleep at night. I, you know, I want what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to eat with more choices. You know, I, I want a sex life, you know, all of those things. 
people can have them, but you got to pick an option that makes them more possible for you. So right. that's what the tool helps to do. Nice. I like that. All right. It's I thought, true. I thought you would it's like so that. True. And, and it's true of really anything. Everything. You know, it's just, it, it's just a really great quote. I really like it. At any rate, so we are actually pretty much at the end of our hour. So I want to thank all of you for taking part, for taking the time, for sharing your stories, for helping other people to see what's possible and that you can make treatment fit into your life, that you can switch from one to another if you need to. You can stay on one that's working for you if that's what you like. And, and you can have a good life even with this sort of meteor that crashed into it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you and have a wonderful rest of your night. You have a blessed one too. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank Be you. well, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.